So, uh, does your camera really matter? Let's take a little look into that today and find out. My name is Owen Bell. I'm a photographer and a general outdoors enthusiast based on the island of Ireland. And I do tend to act like a bit of an agent, but I do enjoy taking the odd photograph, which you can see down below on my Instagram and on my website, owenbell.com. Anyway, enough blabbering. Um, let's get on with what we're going to be talking about today. And today we're going to take a look at your camera and ask, does it really matter what type of camera you have? Um, or are there more important things to think about uh, when you're arranging your shoots or just going for a saunter around town or, or landscapes and doing that sort of photography? Um, and that's what we're going to ask today and take a little look into that. So does your camera matter? We'll find out. So we're back in the car, basically because the wind has picked up and I can't get good audio uh, out here at the minute because of the wind. And I can't, there's, if anybody knows Connemara, there isn't places to hide. You can't just, you can't just turn the wind off and, and go and hide somewhere. So does your camera matter? Well, yeah and no. Like when I first jumped on to like research this video, I found a lot of people were jumping on and pouncing on like, no, focus on your lenses. Forget about the cameras. Like you'll change bodies, but your lenses will last a long time. But I wanted to come at this as like a whole overall kind of look at cameras in general and you know, just the whole idea of photography from that point of view. I mean, a camera without any lenses isn't very useful now, is it? And a lens without a camera to capture that light and digitize it all isn't very useful either. So I think anybody who's done research into buying a new camera, whether you're dipping your toes in for the first time or you're a seasoned veteran, you know, who's looking for that camera just to fill the gap in your heart that isn't filled by human interaction, um, have all fallen into the pit of the numbers machine and the specs and, and you know, looking at, you know, wanting the camera that is just the best of the best, it's got the highest numbers and, you know, I've been guilty of that as well. I mean, higher numbers are better, am I right? You know, they are higher um, or you know fall into that trap of well so and so uses this camera so you know I want to be like them so I want to buy that camera because that's one that they use you know insert, insert various uh, social media influencers here so when it comes to like numbers and spec yes and no it's it's again complicated it's more more complicated than i'm willing to go into in this video but i am willing to make another video about it at some point maybe you know explaining some of the spec lists and what they do and what they mean um so that you know when you're going to look at a camera you know what you're you know what you're getting so as said this video is kind of for anyone that's got like a vague interest uh in photography whether you shoot with your phone a hand down camera that like it's the way i started or you know, you're using the latest and greatest camera that makes you tea while you're sitting taking your landscape photographies. I mean, you know, we can all dream of that sort of stuff, can't we? Okay, I will say this though. No matter what camera you are using, the camera that you're using was a modern camera at some point in time and it was designed to take photographs. So whether it was like the first digital camera that came out at that time or, you know, it's a an older camera you know it still is gonna be if, as long as you're able to take photographs with it you know it's gonna be okay for most situations as long as it has like manual settings and that and even phones now operate under that basis so you could put them all under that category I mean it may not be the ideal equipment for the job but it'll get the job done and at the end of the day cameras don't take pictures photographers do I mean I've got like a prime example here. I mean, like Sarah always talks to me whenever she started doing photography, she was talking to me about how she used to take photos on her iPod Touch all the time. And that was kind of her gateway into photography. And I would always ask her like what her favorite photo was. And her favorite photo is this photograph that she took on a train through a window, you know, at like 
less than ideal lighting conditions and it's her favorite picture and you know what you do have to remember is, is even when you're in the game for you know gear and all that sort of stuff is like the, the bottom line is <laughs> what is true for most people is, is the feeling that they get when they look at that picture average person does not give a shit whether you sh <laughs> whether you shoot on like a canon r5 or a a e1 film camera or something like that they don't care like it's what the image is is that that is what gets them interested the story it's telling the framing the composition the lighting the focus all that sort of stuff that comes into it together that's far more important than the actual camera that you're using all you really need to do you know whenever you're trying to compare that sort of stuff is like google in a basic term mobile photography and you'll find hundreds of photographers who can take photos you know better than a lot of people with better gear all on their phone you know like it just shows like it isn't it, it you know it isn't about having that best camera that's not going to get you the result it's the photographer that takes the camera it takes the camera that takes the photo like i <laughs> i always say like i always feel somewhat hypocritical when i'm saying this because i have a lot of gear um you know i between me and Sarah, we have, I think, six cameras, two drones, a host of lenses, as well as our phones. And, you know, that's just the stuff that we use quite regularly. You know, it's, it's all stuff that's used. There's maybe one or two lenses that I would just put on the back burner now. But, like, that's why I do feel kind of hypocritical sometimes when I'm saying, like, well, the camera doesn't matter because I've got some decent gear and it helps me. It's one of the reasons why I would be so conflicted sometimes whenever I am doing <laughs> these sorts of videos i mean you don't need the best and latest camera gear uh but having a decent camera certainly helps with photography um it gives you options variety as well as flexibility and specifically and you know tools that are specifically designed to work in maybe more extreme situations uh, mainly when mainly on this i'm talking about when you're comparing to phones you know I would argue more so that my camera is at the point where I don't actually think about changing settings. It's like an extension of my body. You know, I may not be the best photographer around, but I'm confident in my ability to use the camera. <laughs> and when I want to make something work, I can make it work. And it's, it's not a case that I'm thinking about what settings I need to do. It's a case that my body is reacting to getting the settings needed to expose correctly. And at the end of the day, when you know your equipment, you know your limitations and you're better able to utilize it and get the maximum potential out of that. And then at that point, you'll be able to realize where your shortcomings are or, you know, tailor your tailor the equipment that you do need to yourself. So you're not wasting money on buying like the camera that does everything, buying the Swiss Army knife when actually all you really need is a screwdriver. So yeah, we're we're so we're back in back in the office for the end of this video. I suppose uh, the weather didn't uh, align great, and a day has passed as well. So, like knowing your equipment will maximize any output that you can get from your camera, um, whether that is your smartphone or it is your you know your smartphone or your fancy pants camera as we call them um you know but the limitations of your you know basic camera if, if you are feel like you're being limited by the gear that you have will like i found that it's been great for my creativity um it's helped me find maybe a niche and a style or it's at least you know helped me identify maybe areas that i'm lacking in that could you know help expand those limitations of my camera um i mean my first camera uh, camera camera as we call it my first DSLR it was a Nikon D3100 I think I got it in like 20 I would say 2011 2012 ish time and that was the first proper camera I set up that's probably when I started my photography journey I would I would argue um, but like I definitely at the time definitely didn't you know use that to its maximum potential and I, I kind of wish that I had pushed myself more with it 
Um, but it's one of those things I actually discovered in recent years because I never got rid of it. I still have it. It sits on a shelf in our living room. It's more of a decoration piece now than anything. Um, but I found I actually was looking for an extra B cam for a project I was working on here a couple of months ago with um, Gary O'Neill. And we were doing some recordings here for, for a live session thing that kind of never got off the ground because of the pandemic, unfortunately. But I was able to get some great B-roll out of that, of that camera. I'd set up like a 35 uh, one eight lens that Sarah had bought. It was a nice F mount lens. Set it up, you know, gave once you gave that camera a lot of light, keep up with all my other gear. Like you couldn't tell it once I'd graded it and mixed it with the other shots, you couldn't tell that it was any older. And that was a camera from 2010. Like that's how old that camera actually was. It was released in 2010 and there was me using it in early, in early 2020 on, you know, video projects when everybody's shooting in 4K, you know, and there was me with this little camera that if I can remember, it did have manual settings, some basic manual settings for video and 1080p, 24 frames a second. That's all I needed, you know? Um, you know, it's this thing of, and as I said at the start of it, you know, I upgraded from that camera before I got the maximum potential out of it. And, you know, it leads to that point is what you actually need and what you think you need are two different things, you know? You may think you need this gear, but it could be a fact that you're just missing something on the gear that you've already have or you know you're missing a setting or you just don't know the gear that well now not always the case but you know it is something to bear in mind for times when you are you know putting together a piece the way i'd kind of sum this up it's like the less time you spend worrying about your camera and your gear the more time you can spend actually working on the projects that you want to complete whether that is portrait photography wedding photography product photography um whether you want to go into videography that is all up to you and if you're spending a lot of time on gear you're spending a lot of time focusing on gear you're not spending enough time making the actual stuff that you need that you want with that gear um you know sure the right equipment can make the job easier but it's not always necessary and you know you can get by without it i mean i shot a whole music video without a gimbal out of a car handheld if i can do that i think anybody can can shoot something decent so Unfortunately, we get to that point of the video where, you know, you come to a conclusion and as with pretty much every photography video uh, I find on the internet, you know, does your camera really matter? It, it, it really depends and I'm sorry I can't tell you any more than that. Um, but yeah, you know, that's been me today. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want more from me, definitely give us a subscription down below. There's a little red box there. I'm sure everybody knows how it works this time. YouTube's been around since 2007. We all know how the subscription service works. Um, but if you give a like sub, it means more people will see this video and, you know, keep watching. Um, you know, follow me on Instagram. It's linked below. I post on there Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, as well as stories on, you know, what I'm up to daily, whether I'm hiking or just making general crap or being an agent, as I said, um, you know, Anyway, and, and beyond that, I suppose, leave a comment below. Um, you know, did you enjoy the video? Let me know. And you can, I would love to hear from you guys if, you know, what your first camera was and, you know, the, the first time you took a shot that you were really proud of with your first camera, you know, not as opposed to, you know, your favorite shot of all time. The, the shot that made you love photography, I suppose, would be the way to, to work it, you know, to throw back to my last video. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching and have a good one.